So welcome, uh, Mr. Balu sir. For uh, thanks for your time, and uh, we'd like to understand a lot more insights and knowledge from you, and want to see how tennis uh, is a is a as a sport has really become big. How Indian players are playing in the top circuits, plus also how it is helping them uh, with analysis uh, can happen in tennis as well. These are the things which you're going to cover today, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, briefly, could you talk about your journey from being a player? to the ITF level three coach and happy, having to work with many upcoming stars or people have already become uh, India number one, number two as well. So just take us through some of your journeys or how this entire tennis thing started off and how you become a top level coach in India. Oh, okay. Actually, the coaching happened when during my playing days itself. So it, I was more a part-time coach uh, helping out some juniors in an academy in Pune called Batra Tennis Center. And then Ball was the, the main uh, chief coach. And I used a small academy, just three, four players, like Nitin Kirtane, Saurav Panja, you know, those kind of players, Jadeep Shetty. So I was helping them out and uh, I used to play my matches, used to help them out. And uh, those are my early days. And after a few years, when I stopped playing, then I, you know, I felt you know, I, I got interest in coaching and then I took it up uh, full time. Because till then, I had not decided that I'll take up coaching as a career. I was doing it because I mean, my playing, my coaching was going side by side. But looking back, uh, those five years actually helped me uh, learn a lot about tennis. You know, because uh, I was coaching, so you know, those uh, foundations which came in and as I was playing alongside, it helped me understand. And because I was working with Nandan, we, all, we always used to get uh, like Davis Cup players like Asif, Ismail, and Rohit Rajpal, and Gaurana Tekar. They always used to come and train there, Sandeep Kirtane. So okay. I, I got to understand a lot about uh, you know, players playing at a higher level uh, when I was just into coaching. I learned from Nandan. And Nandan is a very experienced coach. So he was Davis Cup coach. So it helped me get the idea. Then uh, once I got into full-time coaching, uh, by then coaches education uh, started by the ITF in India. Okay. So I did the level one and level two. Then they called me for level three. Level three was purely on invitation. Okay. By then, I had presented some papers and I had uh, presented some you know, the, the, the workshops. I had made some presentations, and I was I had worked, I had traveled with few ITF teams. So I guess all this made a you know impact, and they invited me for level three, and I did level three. And alongside, I was still I was always working with a group of players uh, playing competitive, you know, that 14 to 18, 20 age group was my core group. I was doing you know, most of the time. Yeah. And uh, like you know, the players then later some of them went on to do well, and then uh, I was working in multiple uh, different academies, and I was freelancing. So some of the players came back to me, and uh, we kind of got together. And uh, now I'm traveling and working with them now. But I've known them since they were a lot younger and from their younger days. Okay. okay. And also by all these years of experience and all my travel and interaction with uh, different coaches and and all over the world. So my insight also you know, improved. Correct. So now I'm working with them and seeing it firsthand, and uh, I guess I'm able to contribute. Otherwise, they wouldn't be asking me to come up with them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's how I am where I am today. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So uh, I mean, uh, great that you know you also been working with many international coaches uh, uh, way back from your HPTC days and uh, high performance uh, there, and then working with Jonathan and uh, Christian as well. So how do you look at, you know, uh, if you let's say, what was the experience working with some international coaches and then what would they bring in? Uh, some kind of insights sir, from that, some learning? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, actually I was fortunate. I mean, I got to work with them. Uh, you know, the fact that I got to work with them uh, because at that point of time in India, I mean, there were coaches like Nandan was very experienced coach and I worked with Nandan. So I was, I've been a bit fortunate because the people I worked with are already were already much more experienced than me, and I could always learn from them first hand. Like you know, I'm working alongside, so I could bring, I could learn from them. And then uh, what I found uh, interesting was uh, my contribution, whatever form, was appreciated by them. So somebody okay. of their experience and seniority, uh, you know, can appreciate what I'm bringing in. So that gives confidence. So that helped me a lot. Working with uh, Jonathan, I knew before. I mean, it was not the first time I met here. I was always in touch with Jonathan and I knew him when I attended one of the courses. Uh, he was the tutor 
So I've known Jonathan since '95, and in 2004 we worked. Uh, 2004 to 2007 we worked together. So from '95 yeah. to 2004 I was still in touch with him. I used to meet him, and uh, what they bring to the table. Of course, Christian was a fitness trainer, and uh, I mean I don't think at that point of time anybody of uh, that level has worked in Indian tennis in India. Yeah. Because somebody who has uh, done the sports science course in, uh, in Germany and uh, has that background and who has played tennis. So he was a full package uh, by itself. So, so I was very lucky that uh, you know, he joined this program. And, and, and I, that's when I really understood what is the, the right way to train. I mean, I okay. wouldn't say even tennis specific. I would say the right way to train. Because sure. any matter the child is 20 or child is 8 years old, uh, the right, how to train correctly, like, you know, appropriately. <laughs> so, so, could you elaborate on that? What is the right way to train? I mean, yeah, okay. Just... Uh, yeah, I can I'll, I'll tell you that. For example, people talk about uh, strength training, I mean, weight training, but actually it's strength training. Mm -hmm. So, somebody like Christian, even an eight-year-old, nine-year-old, skinny kid, he used to actually train them. The strength. Okay. So, he chose completely different set of exercises, uh, you know, completely which the child could do, which was harm, uh, which was not harmful for the child in any which way. It was purely, you know, a, a science behind it, and uh, he had a clear idea of what he was getting into. Okay. And they were like, you know, uh, like some players who were playing futures that I'm uh, coming to train, and he used to train them. I mean, with real good weights and uh, really push them. So he was okay. doing both spectrum, both ends. But both the children, both the players were actually working on strength. Okay. And uh, and then he had a plan. I mean, like, you know, it was uh, needed to explain to the child what this plan is. So we have a three-week uh, schedule now. We're going to do this. When you finish this, this is the objective. You know? This is what we're working on. So he had a clear idea of uh, what uh, he was working on. For example, when, like, as a coach, I come back after a tournament and give a feedback that, like, you know, this child has a problem moving from this end to this end or moving in this particular fashion. And he, with his uh, knowledge of uh, sports science and his background of tennis, okay. it was uh, very easy for him to understand. Okay, okay. That is one. And from Jonathan, it was about how meticulous, like, you know, he had everything written down. Like, you know, like, you know, I got, that's where I learned the habit of making reports and you know, mm -hmm. used to plan for the week. And uh, you know, so everything was recorded. Okay. That is one area where I felt at that point of time, okay, there were coach, good coaches in India, like you know, played at a good level, also contributing from the coaching angle, really, you know, uh, really good on court. But uh, nobody had this uh, habit of uh, putting things on record and uh, you know having the complete thing, you know, on paper. Right, right. So right. Jonathan, uh, that's what I learned from Jonathan. So I mean, for me, it was a good influence because I was seeing a lot of things happening good on court, which I picked up from you know Nandan and. Uh, senior people who I was uh, worked with or interacted with. And then I see Jonathan here with a very good uh, meticulous plan and everything is written down and put down and like, you know, it's like, you know, everything is organized. So, yeah. I, I, so I, I picked that up from him. So that kind of uh, helped me become better because I could do that part also well. And I was, I was, I came from a school where we did you know, the, the, the on-court stuff also well. Yeah. So, so I took the uh, rest of both and then I, Kind of evolved from there, you know, using my own way of uh, interpreting both how much to use this, how much to use that. But uh, that influence has been uh, really good. So basically, wow. the, the structure to coaching uh, in, in, in all which way, you know, Correct. The, you know, the administrative side or the practical working side. Okay. The structure was actually uh, my, I was influenced by uh, working with Jonathan and, uh, and Christine. So no, later now, like when I go to Spain and I work with them in an academy, RV academy, I, I interact with those coaches uh, who work with like the pros. Uh, for me, it's not yeah. difficult to relate to them because I know where they come from and uh, you know, I already know. Like, you know, I can see they prepare. And yeah. Sometimes it's funny, like, you know, and I also invited one of the coaches and we did a few camps. So it is actually interesting because for me, I plan and I go on court and uh, I can I can go ahead with it. But for them, uh, they have to have everything written down the previous mm -hmm. season. Yeah, so they yeah. get time to prepare. When they walk on the court, they get a little uh, <laughs> uncomfortable. Yeah. And suddenly, a bunch of, uh, like, you know, first day, I remember, we were doing a very recreational program and uh, we had a bunch of people coming in.
so this uh, coach was uh, very nervous because uh, he asked me how many people are coming i said i don't know he said what level i said i don't know and i was okay <laughs> with it because yeah, i yeah. said come i'll see so when they came in he looked at me and said balu i'm not looking that side you just take care of it and tell me what i should do <laughs> okay because okay. for him it was too much no people walking in five you know seven eight people walking in never don't know how they play yeah and straight away put things together true 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 that my you know indian uh, thank <laughs> you ma'am uh, help yeah so that's so that's a good that's a good it's way i mean you I could, you learn the structure and uh, how the meticulous way of working yeah, uh, coaching exactly. perspective so for me it's both if there is a issue and if that cannot be done and if uh, because that day we couldn't have done because i was to the recreational program we are doing it for the local people mm-hmm. we cannot ask for and we asked but nobody responded but they yeah. all up. there were around 12 15 people who showed up just like that okay so, okay understand any old kid to a you know 45 year old man mm-hmm. <laughs> that was the and some of them could hit some of them could not even connect yeah yeah so then it was a panic because that's not something they prepared for we can think okay. on the feet right right because right. like my the, the indian side of uh, what i learned came really handy so handy for like thing. you know okay look at it look at it and and that comes from experience it cannot be done otherwise right so uh, let me get directly into it your work with many top players now uh so and and these players have played in multiple grand slams as well so how does a player or a coach prepare a player before the game you know during the game and after the game if you just give us some pointers about what happens before the game what happens during the match you know uh, i think uh, and then what happens after the match whether it's win or loss so mainly for the top international grand slams like in australian open us open so how does it really a player prepares and a coach also helps them in this preparation yeah i mean uh, we, we, we respective whether it's a grand slam or another uh, tournament the match is a match yeah, okay so preparation for match is always uh, the same i mean whatever you asked is applicable to any tournament okay uh, because it's a grand slam uh, i mean okay the earlier preparation if it's friends then you play going to play on clay so you prepare for clay if it's grass wimbledon you prepare for grass so you take that as way but uh, for a match pre match is always the same okay. one is to know the opponent once you know the opponent you are looking to understand what the opponent is mm-hmm. so like you know we were working with the player and uh, i'm not like you know i've not been on the tour for so many years so i don't know many players mm-hmm. but if i am on if it's a, if it's a tour if it's a, a, a tour where i'm familiar with most players i already have an idea what that player is uh, going to do okay then i bring in like you know then player also if he is familiar with the tour he also will get his information mm-hmm. so within then we talk about it like you know what does he do uh, what does he uh, you know that opponent what does he do well what does he doesn't do well what are his strengths what are his you know what is that bothers him and uh, what are the conditions we are we have you know is it a hard court or you no know, altitude it's a windy or you no know, it's going to be rainy next day or so all the conditions uh, whether it's su- suitable to us suitable to him so everything is put together and uh, uh, it's discussed with the player yeah and, but we also I mean it also has to be with what suits the player because his game style i don't know what he can do what is comfortable with because the player who is not comfortable going to the net you cannot have a plan that he runs to the net every ball yeah. so it has yeah. to be with what he can do yeah so, so can you the, can you take us with the basic uh, thing is done irrespective of which tournament you play so you okay. figuring out a way to you know find you have a clear plan and a clear idea of what it's uh, going to be next day when you step on the court okay sir can you just take us uh, with some example let's say which you have at least with any of the player if it's okay for you to share uh, let's say who was an opponent if you don't have to mention the opponent name also like what happened yeah. what yeah. what is the finding an example a very good example is sir, without taking names i mean uh, yeah yeah player i was working with so that one particular week uh, lost a close match to a, a player very close match and then uh, it, it was a, like a three week tour so the very next week uh, he, i mean he lost to this player in the finals and the very next week he was playing in the semis okay so when he was going in going before the semis and also like after the match okay, okay i'll touch on both now because yeah. you asked me after the match so after yeah, the match yeah. normally what happens is you are actually analyzing the match so you're talking about what went well what didn't go well uh, why you won why you lost mm-hmm. and both has to be clear like you know what you did well and what you didn't do well and so in that the tactical options come in and then you know what the execution part is also looked at mm-hmm. so coming back to this initial what i started with 
so in this particular match after the after the match i was telling him uh, that like you know the opponent was uh, reading his serve mm-hmm. because uh, like you know he was serving a particular pattern like you know one serve here one serve that like pattern and uh, the second service game of the match i mean it was a long match 7-6 in the third we played mm-hmm. like three and a half but this player was so smart he picked uh, my player's uh, serve pattern in the second game of the match second service game of the match oh uh-huh. so, okay which from outside i picked i mean that's my job as a coach to see <laughs> yeah. which normally if you do it in a match analysis uh, that should come out clearly yeah so anyway so so that's the first thing i told him i said he was returning your serve comfortably because he was reading you mm-hmm. and uh, he wasn't sure because these things uh, the player is not always convinced yeah and then there was also another uh, pattern of play i said when you went here you always went there and then he was going back here so the next time when you are here you don't do this you stick to the other uh, pattern so when he played him the next time the immediate next week it's like mm-hmm. after four days he plays on a sunday then he's playing again on friday Mm-hmm. he played him he so i told him okay keep this pattern and the pattern of play he understood because we went on court and i explained and so he was clear he was clear of pattern of play yeah so he wasn't very sure mm-hmm. so when he went on court he actually tested it okay so, and then he realized yes this is what it is so he used that and that match he won wow very he nice. won 6 to 3 and then okay. he came back okay. and he said he said yeah like you know, he was totally convinced he said yeah you are right when i do this uh, i'm not i'm i'm comfortable in the rally and when i'm serving like this i'm winning a lot of three points and so mm-hmm. this is an example so like this usually it happens so this is because i saw the match and immediately other times the player if i'm not familiar with the tool the player will tell me see he does this he does this uh, so how should i go about yeah okay so okay. if i if i watch the match then my feedback uh, also i bring in if i don't know the player and the nowadays but but this is the challenger level but once you go to the tour level the advantage is uh, most of them are uh, players who have been of around so you have their matches on youtube yeah yeah the player gets some information but i can look at uh, youtube then i can talk to like like the spanish coaches if they are around i talk to them because they have been around for a while so they know a lot of players okay so they tell me okay this is it, this is it. so we basically gather information about the player uh, to we going to play against if we don't know them right right Uh, during so, the match uh, not much can be done uh, but mm-hmm. Australian Open qualifying they allowed coaching okay so during okay during overs you could call them and you could uh, talk right so otherwise during the match it's all up to the player for him to execute player, but sometimes yeah like you know when they look you know, normally you support but like, sometimes like you know you kind of uh, suggest that like you know you go or like you know be aggressive or something like that you you suggest right. uh, in, in various if they're close by and you can say something you say it's not technically allowed but mm. it's not a you know, big thing that you are coaching coaching kind of thing. so yeah, you are yeah. cheering you know you you say something and uh, because you already had the discussion the player understands yeah correct but correct. sometimes like you know after a point he looks at you and uh, you know the, you look at him and he understands that okay whether the point was played the right pattern or not mm-hmm. and Next it comes time. out of uh, a good understanding between the two yeah it cannot That's be true. no just like that happen. it cannot happen yeah and yeah, you cannot right. talk because it's something you cannot sit in like this we cannot discuss <laughs> right. just like this and like you know sometimes he plays a point like for example uh, like you know one of the players i'm working with i'm you know trying to get him to you know sometimes when the ball is soft come in and put away the volley mm-hmm. so, and then we practice so mm-hmm. for example in a match if he does it after he wins the point he look at me and will smile <laughs> so it will be like for people it will be funny why is he smiling you know but yeah you're smiling because he's not used to doing it and he has done it in that match right 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 so like that so this is what i was talking about so these are the things during the match which happens okay okay and after the match as i told you i mean it's about analyzing what happened and uh, you know, yeah trying to fix whatever uh, didn't work and also to improve on what went well yeah correct sir as you have seen that the, the the sport has evolved every sport has evolved you know from the way it started off even in tennis with grand slams there's so much of data numbers coming in i think when this last time matt you spoke about the revolution of the like the rotation of the ball and there's so many information came out of it so all this information video analysis data is actually enabling coaches to make better right so they need someone to look at it to so see what happened the facts of the game so how have you been able to see this kind of a trend coming up player looking at this thing is it too early for indian market or is it something really happening or people are picking it up now 
Indian market, I think it's not, uh, because also like if you see tennis in India is not that huge. It's not mm -hmm. a, like an industry industry. Okay. It's a very small community if mm -hmm. compared to the rest. Even if you compare even tennis or badminton, yeah. the tennis community is not big. Though tennis has been around for a while and we have had uh, international players, we had good results in Davis Cup, we have Grand Slam winners. But the numbers uh, at that level are very small. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the, the entry level and the grassroots level, uh, there is not much requirement for technical, uh, you know, this kind of data and uh, software and things like that because it's more like, you know, bringing volume to the sport, making it more enjoyable for them. Yeah. yeah. So once it becomes the, the serious side of it is when you are looking at every small uh, inch, uh, advantage you can take. Correct. For Correct. that, the numbers are uh, not big in India. So as mm -hmm. an industry, for that side, uh, the, 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 data, the data side is not uh, mm -hmm. huge. But yeah, it is useful. And it's also with uh, like a, all, all gadgets or any new technology, it's, uh, it's about how much you use it. For yes, some players, yes. it's more important. For some players, it's not so important. Mm -hmm. So it also depends on the individual, like you know, how much they want to know. And like, uh, for example, like I said, I mean, as a coach, when you're watching a match, uh, in my opinion, the coach should pick up... Uh, these basic patterns and uh, you should be aware of it. Okay. okay. Not aware of it. I mean, you're going to rely only on a, a data which comes from outside. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not uh, uh, the big uh, uh, skill uh, for a coach because he's not doing it. Somebody yeah. else is doing that analysis. So okay. then okay. you don't even have to travel as a coach. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is get the data. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. That's the, the thing. So data is useful. Yeah, sometimes it's useful because uh, like, you know, certain cases, even if the coach is ex trying to explain and the player is not convinced, then the data can uh, convince because it's a fact. It's a, it's a number which is, you know, concrete. Yeah, so yeah, correct. Can substantiate what the coach is saying in that mm -hmm. sense. Okay. Sir, uh, I think when I spoke to you last time, you mentioned, I think you're one of the earliest person who started looking at video analysis way back in 2004 and 5, or I think 8, sorry, that's when you mentioned about, right? I think in no, Chennai. Four, five, yeah, 4 or 5, I, I mean, I used to make the clips from uh, you know, yeah. the maker and then do it. Uh, yeah, correct. The so, software was even more expensive in India. So, correct. So, so now, speaker from XP was my first uh, tool. <laughs> Okay. With the with like analog, the tape uh, video camera. <laughs> Correct. So now, sir, uh, things have, I mean, the technology has totally developed. And uh, uh, way back, I think you had a very uh, a futuristic idea that how these can be helpful maybe at a player development at a, under 14, under 16, to see how, you know, each and technique or development can happen. All right. Uh, so do you see that is already been implemented in, in the academies or there is a, how it can be useful for the, player development for any coaches to pick up these things? Well, definitely, it's it's very useful. I mean, for player development. The reason I did that is because uh, that time some of the you know, players who went on later to do well in men and women, they were mm -hmm. like 15, 16. And uh, it was a good teaching tool for me. Okay. And, okay. It took a lot of time to get that, uh, get the output of what I wanted to show them. Mm -hmm. But the, the result was for them, when I show and talk to them, it was useful. Okay. Okay. So certainly useful. It, now with technology, I mean, now I use the software on the phone. I mean, I yes. You take the video and then I, you know, transfer it to the software on the phone, and then I can scroll it. Like yeah, I correct. Stop I, that. I had trouble because those, like, especially with the server from here, the next frame is here. Mm -hmm. so I don't because when I do with XP and that kind of a very poor, very uh, not so sophisticated software. I mean, the speed of the, the serve, the serve is so quick. Mm -hmm. I miss the contact and all. I mean, okay. I have to really like go back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And like, you know, really get, get the, to get what I want to show the child. Yes. With this yes. now, I mean, I put it on the phone. Like in, you know, in, in less than a minute, I'm scrolling it and I can go back. I can go yeah. forward. It's like they can see it like this, like this, like this, like this. <laughs> Every frame. Comes exactly. And if I'm not with them, like I, sometimes I, like, you know, you're working and I take the video and then I go home and then I do screenshots with pointers and send it to them. Mm -hmm. Just two lines below saying like, you know, look at this spot, look at the red line, look at how your uh, neck is. And I mean, it's so crystal clear. I mean, next day when they come, mm -hmm. they, have, they know exactly what's happening. Perfect. It's so much easier now. Yeah. Again, how many people are using it? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Because these things don't take time. 
because yeah. otherwise, otherwise if you shoot a video then you take them to a room put them mm. you know tv and then you show and then you play slow motion that's time consuming and a lot of times in a you know running an academy with lot of kids it's difficult to do correct correct unless you keep a day or a session i said to do only this for a select players yeah like some yeah. players uh, this afternoon to us going to be like this mm. i i'm not sure if that is uh, is happening in there okay great uh, uh, sir uh, it's so convenient now i mean the cameras are good you have yeah. good, uh, video uh, cameras you have slow motion option and then of course then there's a lot of soft with apps which you can download yes 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 so you're saying it's definitely going to be useful if the coaches can use it in the player development as a coaching okay, okay. player development it's it's like these kind of things are because that that stage the players are not very clear the pro level mm-hmm. they already know a lot of things yeah yeah Earlier, right clarity is about uh, you know you you are confirming you supporting your uh, theory with uh, a fact in case the, the player has a doubt Mm-hmm. and uh, it's only clarification so you don't need extensive explanation of things and also you're not working so much in detail on the technical for mm-hmm. them to see what's happening and they already know when the contact is there they know they know they're not hit with spin they know they're losing control yeah the player development stage is when you are actually educating the child so it's okay for an education it's a requirement in terms of education mm-hmm. for the player okay and actually coaching them and just making it better Sure. to help them understand what they are doing okay okay sir so one uh, here uh, one research which i was reading through uh, was that they connect how an actual game and the practice session which happens are two different things okay people say that 70% of your points are won in the first four rallies you know so return so plus one and so so you win 70% or 80% of points in the first four rallies okay and but typically in their training sessions we tend to play a lot of rallies like you know we love to see 10 rallies being played or 20 rallies being played and, and we love as a fan but typically you win more points and in tennis you win more points that's where you can win the matches so how is it uh, like do you connect the match scenario to a practice scenario or the match information which comes the data which comes in then you go on adopt okay we have been losing lot my second serve we not winning points and then you start is there a way you correlate sir uh yeah there is definitely a correlation so like i'll i'll just clear, connect i mean i'll just refer to what you meant uh, said and then we'll go yeah yeah the tennis mainly the serve for and back and the ground strokes and the serve are the only like you know ground strokes if you will keep as one serve as another so only okay. two strokes actually which is happening 80 plus percent of times okay grass somebody serving and volleying maybe there is more volleys and less ground strokes but majority of the surface now i mean the times there's no grass we playing on hard or clay yeah so ground strokes and serve are the only two strokes which are used mm-hmm. and ground strokes is the one which is most more hit more than serve because serve only you're doing half the time yeah yeah the receiving games are all your ground strokes mm-hmm. so the reason you do that is again like you know those the strokes the point may finish in four strokes mm-hmm. they need to be perfecting the hitting part from various parts of the court okay different spin different pace different like the accuracy level is built by repetition yeah yeah and also when you talk about uh, the four shot uh, thing it also when they are practicing there are times when you are practicing with serve and first shot <laughs> because with the serve you dominate the point i mean that's obvious now in especially in men's tennis i mean the serve is uh, you know you so once you so dominate the point with serve it will get over in four points four right. shot Because right, right. Because you need to finish the point with serve and one shot. Yeah, two yeah. Two shot is actually a, already a luxury. Correct, correct, correct. Two and but the receiving part, you make you are you need to make a good return and you know also need to make one good defensive shot to stay in the point. Correct. You no know, thrown out of the point. Yeah. To do these things, you need to have a good sound uh, base and the ground. Okay. The base. So okay. You'll be practicing returns. Yes, you'll be practicing serve. but you'll also be practicing hitting running hitting because there will be one point where okay there might be like 5% or 10% of the points only you're going to play more than five rallies yes yes but those those points can make a big difference in the match okay i mean okay. imagine you have a 20 point 20 ball rally and you win i mean that player is definitely more confident uh, going into the next game or it can be a break point mm-hmm. both are grinding and you pull through okay okay you're not used to it you cannot do it Right, right. You can be running a marathon, but you come on the tennis court, and if you have to do ten balls at that pace, 
completely different. I mean, you are not going to last, you will not reach, your execution will not be great. Yes, yes. So that is the reason. So you need to, because there's not much to do. I mean, this is what tennis is now, serve and ground strokes, training. If you don't train that and you don't practice hitting that, mm-hmm. because how people are hitting, I mean, they're behind the baseline, they still rip the ball. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. has to come by only practice. You cannot do it just like that. Right, right. Perfect. Sir, uh, this is the last couple of questions. Uh, sir, uh, you, when you look at an upcoming, upcoming player, you know, at a male age, uh, age of 16, 15, what is that you look at, you know, like as a coach? Maybe you're scouting a player, maybe he might be, maybe he's uh, got a good talent to go to the next level. So what are things actually you look at when you watch a player from outside and from a coaching perspective? Yeah, for me, the for me the first thing I look at at 15, 16, I look at is uh, how well he's moving. Okay, that's the like the first thing we see, and then you watch, and then uh, your attitude, like mm-hmm. uh, his intensity, his attitude, his application. What is it going on? So mm-hmm. that's the talent, so called. If you want to say talent, talent, you look for. Mm-hmm. Then okay, the next thing will be okay. He's good. I mean, okay, he's you know he's uh, moving well, good attitude. Then you look at his uh, size, you know, he's a big kid or uh, at 15, 16, you know, I mean, it's a kid who's you know, already six foot or, you know, or, or it's only five, two or five, three, so that mm-hmm. kind of thing comes in. And then the, 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 for me, the, I mean, for me, the last part would be then we'll come to the technical side. Like, you know, he's technically sound. Mm-hmm. If you tick all the four, I mean, he's a talent to definitely support. Yeah. Oh, okay. Choice. <laughs> I'll put it that way. But to get all these together is uh, is what you know uh, world is looking at. <laughs> okay. To right. find a player who will fit all the bills, have I mean, a good attitude, moves well, big guy, you know, um, has a nice sound technique at 16, are willing mm. to work, and then okay, you have a financial sponsor or you have yeah, a financial yeah. backing. That completes the package. Right, right, right. But sir, also any information about let's say. Uh, how is the serving as using uh, a mindset like what data is talking about a serve is serve speed is that comes into picture or it's more so a development you stage a talent scout uh, yeah when you're watching you will have an idea of what so, so the speed is serving and that okay. will also be connected to his height right if he's not a tall guy he's not going to serve big yeah 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 correct like, like that's what it said so when you watch him and the first thing okay you see him okay he doesn't move well but he's a big guy with a big serve and a big game okay so, yeah because he can manage because he's not he's not going to be scrambling around. He's going to play big for sure. You know, he's already mm-hmm. six one, and uh, you know, parents are tall, so you expect him to go to six three, six four, or even six two. Okay, great. So he's got the frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that is all one part of it. But attitude is the other part. If he's got that, but he's not willing to work, or he's not you know, the proper attitude to because sixteen is nothing. I mean, <laughs> okay. even if he had one junior Wimbledon, is nothing because I men men's is what it matters. Okay, okay. So everything comes down to what is this? They're not 16, but the kid is sharp, he understands, and like, you know, he, every match you see him play better and he's learning. I mean, with that kind of an attitude, a big guy at 16, yeah, I mean, you know, you know that you know, he has a wonderful chance of uh, you know, going ahead. Right. The attitude right. Uh, comes well. So the, the game and all will, you know, is for me not the primary thing. Of course, it's required, but if you don't have the attitude, you're not. You know, you're not, so it's not going to help. Right, right. A lot of so, examples on the tour also now. I mean, I don't want to mention names, but a lot of yeah. names are there. A lot of Correct. people who showed promise, didn't do well. So, and there are a lot of other examples where them, the junior or earlier days, people never gave them much. Uh, you know, they never mm-hmm. thought they would make it and they've all, actually, they went on to be top 10. Perfect. They're, all, like, they're always examples. Of, and, and the best players we see are uh, good attitude, uh, work, good work ethic, uh, good game, good physique. They tick okay. all the boxes. Yeah. yeah. Most of them who you see in the top. Nice, nice. Sir. So one, one last question. You're, being the, uh, you're in the coaching level tutor also. I mean, you guide a lot of coaches, upcoming coaches as well. And uh, they're the ones who's going to develop a lot more kids coming in the future. So uh, has it been ever like, you know, what is your input for them? And you mentioned about using a technology in their, uh, in their development of players also. So how does, what is that you guide to them, sir? I mean, what is your input for upcoming coaches to say how to improve the, uh, the coaching level or to the, improve the development of a players? So coaches, uh, yeah, when they're very, uh, first thing is they need to get their fundamentals in place. Okay. Just, and fundamentals about what tennis is. Mm-hmm. It's not just foreign backhand. I mean, the tennis is a game. 
I mean, you have to okay. understand tennis as a game, and then the the, the forehand backhand is only the technical side of it. Mm-hmm. But tennis as a game is uh, bigger. Mm-hmm. Then you you get that fundamentals right. Okay. Okay. And, and if you are working with uh, the entry level kids at grassroots, you 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 find you get uh, you know you uh, you take courses or you get educated on how best you can contribute to those level of coaches. Okay. So whatever level you are working with, the coaches have to make an effort to understand how best they can contribute because a coach who is excellent at uh, working with 16, 17. He need not be good at uh, working with beginners mm-hmm. because children are smaller, you no, know, six and eight year old kids. So you yeah, yeah. able to relate. So it's not it's not a fault. I'm just telling. So so if he's if, if that coach walks in just because he's good with eighteen year olds, he cannot walk into a junior program and assume that he will it will go well. Mm-hmm. He has to reinvent himself actually. Because yeah, you're yeah. dealing with another set of people with another set of requirements. Though it is tennis and though you're teaching foreign back and you can call it that way, but it's not the same. Yeah, yeah, correct. So for coaches, good fundamentals and you identify the, the like, you know, like the core uh, of, you know, the, the age group you are working with and you cater to them. Okay, okay. And working at any level is a pride. Just okay. Because you work with pro level players, you are a better coach. You work with the beginner level, you are not a good coach. That is, that's, that's a myth. Yeah, that is yeah. happening a lot of times because people say, "Oh, I'm working with only the tournament group. I don't work with beginners." I mean, they take pride in saying, "I work only with the tournament group." Yeah, Tournament's yeah. The same. I mean, you are a coach. Mm-hmm. If you, you can't work with smaller kids. Okay, you can say, "I'm better with this group because with my mindset and my uh, style and this thing, I'm more effective with this group than this group." Because Correct. you know, every teacher cannot be good. The kindergarten yeah. teachers have a different mindset. College professors have a different mindset. Right, right. But by saying that uh, this, I don't work with them because uh, they are not good enough, is being uh, you know very very uh, sure. Uh, it, it's 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 unfair. Unfair on this thing, sir. Uh, just to end up with the last question. Uh, so uh, I think recently I was watching a webinar by an international uh, audience there, and they say the average age of a tennis fan is somewhere close to 55 years, 50 to 55 years average age. Uh, you have seen the other formats of the sport, like cricket, it has moved from test to ODI, now T20, now T10. It has become shorter to make it more engaging for the fans. You know, now a lot of millennials, young fans are coming in. Kabaddi, if you have seen it picked up, they have made like th- three raids. The third raid is a do and die, you have to win the points over there. So the game has evolved, game has changed because of a, a TV audience or the audience who don't have much time now has become much more shorter. You know, the IPL is like a three hours compared to a long test match. So, are you, uh, I've been seeing some discussion that how tennis can change the format to make it much more, uh, you know, more engaging, faster. Uh, I mean, could be like a single point views. I mean, there are things which is, can be done. Uh, any idea in terms of uh, would you allow that kind of sport to become better so that more audience will start following and some change can come in? I don't, I'm not too sure because already in doubles they're doing it. They have no ad and then uh, they have the uh, third set uh, super tie break and uh, mm-hmm. doubles is already happening. And they tried yeah. out with women's circuit uh, some three, four years ago and playing short sets. Like, you know, first okay. two wins the set and best of yeah, three yeah. sets. But uh, it wasn't well uh, received, like you said, because the, maybe the, the tennis audience is a little older. They are used to mm-hmm. the format which they grew up with and, and they like it. And like, but, but already there has been effort to make it small. Like even Wimbledon has introduced a final set uh, tie break. Yeah, yeah. Uh, earlier that was, yeah. In, that was a long set. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there are efforts to make it. And like even the first changeover is, uh, you know, you don't sit, you just walk through. Okay, okay. So to make it uh, p- 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 spectator friendly, we see a lot of tournaments, like especially when the winter season starts and indoor thing. Changeovers are all mm-hmm. music and light and things like that. Like, you know, they make a, a show out of it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, tennis as a sport has got it's very traditional. So uh, people, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, okay, cricket is also old, but tennis has more attachment to tradition than, uh, like you know, Wimbledon at certain. Uh, norm. Yeah. But they are also moving away, but gradually because of times and requirements, it changes. But still, Wimbledon still holds on to all white rules, even to practice. Yeah, yeah. You don't go in your colors. You have to wear white. Oh, okay. 
Okay. So, 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 so tennis has got this tradition uh, strongly attached, and and see U.S. Open. If you see U.S. Open crowd is one of the noisiest crowd for a tennis uh, match. Mm -hmm. It's okay. happening. Players are playing. I mean, jets mm -hmm. are flying. Crowd is a mean, huge stadium. Lot of noise. You don't even hear the ball. But okay. players play. So I don't but, think so. Gradually, if the crowd wants to get involved and uh, make, but Wimbledon, if you see, it's pick and play. You know, they they don't even they, you know a child cannot play, but they have to stop playing. So that's tradition. Okay, okay. So people like yeah. the tradition. You know, they don't want to break away completely from tradition and and go. And All right. uh, with, uh, the third set uh, um, super tie break and doubles being shorter, it is uh, it's getting there. Also, sure. the points are getting shorter, so it's not like you uh, know, like in the mid uh, mid 80s and all. The rallies, clay court rallies used to go on 30, 40 balls every point. Like clay right. Right. Okay. Now, even on clay, okay, comparatively, the rallies are longer compared to the rest of the hard court tennis. Mm -hmm. But still, points are getting over uh, fast. Yeah, people yeah. are loving it. Like you know, the Wimbledon. I mean, the Australian Open where uh, Djokovic and Nadal played uh, late into the night. I mean, into the morning actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. People loved it. So that was match people talk about. So yeah, yeah. Thing, so the longer the match is when people talk about those matches. I mean, nobody talks about a one and one, two and two match where you know somebody blew somebody off. He played yeah, yeah. excellent tennis. He played one of phenomenal tennis to beat. Mm -hmm. Like Steffi Graf once won uh, French Open uh, final love and love. Yeah. And nobody okay. talks about that match. Correct, correct. People talk about the match where it has gone 7 5 in the third, and you know, you're down match point, you come back, your two sets low down, you come back. I mean, people talk about Djokovic, uh, Federer match, where match point down, you come back. Yeah, yeah. I think tennis is connected with uh, the longevity and the drama. Right, right. Uh, rather than the, the short fire uh, thing. Right, right. That's how the tennis fan connects. That's my Perfect. belief from what I'm, I'm seeing. That's good, sir. Also, like you said, the younger generation, a lot of 20s people, the fans become, the average age of fans become 20 to 25. Mm. Maybe they wouldn't want this drama. No, they want things <laughs> to finish first. Yeah, that's true. Sir, uh, thanks for your time, sir. It was great having uh, to discuss with you. I love the way always speak to coach, pick up their you know mindset, what goes behind it. And then there's something which I love to always hear about. And uh, thanks for taking time and then uh, sharing your experience, sir. I'll, I'll stay in touch with you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, thanks. Sir. Bye.